Thank you for inviting me here. Uh, I want to thank NAAA and ServNet and Pierre um, for bringing me to the stage. I want to thank you for your time. Uh, I realize you have a lot of choices. And uh, to choose to be in this room and this particular topic, which can be a bit sensitive, I guess, um, I'm very thankful that you chose to come here and, and hear what I have to say. And, and I've been in this industry for, as Pierre said, 30 years. I started at four, OK, four years of age. So I was, I was a greeter on a gravel lot at a Toyota store. Okay, my, my family kind of forced me to do that with a dog, of course. You go out and greet the customers, keep them happy and satisfied. So I've been in this industry literally in the auction side and in the uh, retail side for a very long time. So this statement is a huge statement when I make it. It is not passive in any way. So moving on to more of the topic, what do your customers want? Well, I think in, in chatting with everybody, and, and I sent out tons of email surveys. I, mean, I sent out hundreds. And of course, you guys probably know that out of hundreds of email surveys, I had to pick up the phone quite a few times to call guys to go, hey, can you talk to me here? Because dealers don't often respond via email. But I thought, even though I'm a dealer, and I buy cars, and I represent lots of different dealerships around the nation, that it's really important to think like a customer. And that's easy for me to say, because I am the customer. But I think it's important for you as a group of people to be able to say, and hopefully we'll be able to do that today. But for the purpose of the exercise, I thought, I'm going to dress like a customer. And no, I'm not trying to bring back the Miami Vice theme. So I don't know which person I would be in that segment. But So to think like a customer, I think uh, one thing I would ask you to do is the thing every presenter would never ask you to do, and that's take out your cell phones, if you would. We're going to hopefully this will work. Hopefully this will be good. I want to do a brief little text survey. Okay? And we don't, I don't capture your numbers, and I don't cross-market you or anything like that. So it's totally safe. And what we're going to do is I've taken four of the responses from dealers and categorized them here for you to participate in. I, I'm curious, if you're the customer, how would you vote? What would, you, what would be your perspective? So what, if you've ever texted, I'm sure a lot of you have texted. We have all text, probably. Here's the question. What do you think the number one issue is with your customer? Okay, Not just me, but all your, your large customer base. Now, you're going to text it to 22333, if all goes right. And the questions are going to be based, basically, like I said, what was uh, mentioned before. There's fees and costs, always a popular topic. You guys love talking about fees and costs, right? More reconditioning, that's another particular response. Condition reports. And lastly, mobile upstream units. So. If everything goes proper, we should see, hopefully, lifetime response on what your thoughts and opinions are in this category. And again, I will very thankfully say, thank you, Lord, that that works. Um, and hopefully, it will continue to ebb and flow. But what you're going to see, regardless of how this turns out, is that all of you have an opinion or a thought. Okay? All of you have thought about what's important to my dealer. And all of us as dealers, I mean, we really love to hear that and we want to think that. But are you on track with what your customers think? And it's always a battle. Okay? I think that, in fact, quite frankly, Richard, the previous speaker, if I were really following the Harley Davidson way, I should have got up here and not had the shirt on. I should have had customer tattooed on my chest. So, but this gives us a good glimpse of how on track you are. And this is not meant in any means to say you are or aren't on track. So. But this will continue to rise and fall. It's always kind of fun to do in a presentation environment. And as you can see, everybody's saying condition reports. And some are saying fees and costs, more upstream units, more reconditioning. And I love doing this. I really I love this segment because regardless of the results, regardless of how it turns out, what it does show is your ability to get inside the head of your customers and the ability to think like your customers think. And like other speakers have said today, it's really, often it's said it's about relationship. But I think it goes more than that. Because relationship can be just a friendship. Being a customer is being more than a relationship. Getting to think like how they think. And so I think that's a really great thing. So we'll move on from here. And you can keep texting, because I, I can show this information later on if you want to see how it really turned out in the end. But generally, it'll follow the same course. So the customers. Here's how they responded. And I added a couple more pieces of questions that, uh, or responses that they gave me. So some of these weren't on that particular survey. But 
these are all rated, and so units with condition reports. That was a big topic um, that we're going to drill down on a little bit more. But it's basically having more vehicles with more condition reports. That was a big response. More reconditioning. Again, another big response category. Dealers wanted to see more vehicles with more reconditioning done to them before they purchase. More upstream units. Units that are ran first time upstream at bidding price levels, not just put out there with a price. And we'll talk about that. Fees. Now, this surprised me because as a dealer, as a customer, okay, that's what I hear about. Well, if and when I go to physical auctions, and some of you know I do go to physical auctions, but all my cars are proxy bid, anything I'm going to buy that day is proxy bid, so I can just talk to dealers, right? So I don't want to get distracted from one thing to another. I thought for sure that would be number one. I would have bet money and lost money and we're in Vegas, so I guess that's appropriate. Number one was condition reports. You guys were right on and very good, congratulations. You guys deserve a hand, because that is awesome that you're seeing and hearing from your customers that condition reports are a key issue. And while dealers, your customers, and what they want is really important, being focused on things is important as well. Transparency, this is one category that I took all these responses and said, okay, how can I take all of these responses and all of these measurements and put them in something that you can take home? Put them in a box that, that kind of makes sense to what they are and yet at the same token puts a bow on it so that you can unpack it later and maybe do something with it. So transparency is one thing we're going to talk about. Another thing we're going to talk about is simplicity. And simplicity is just that, making things simpler, making things easier for people to do. And in this day and age, when we're balancing between physical auctions and online auctions, that, that can be a, an interesting challenge. Another thing is accessibility. And much like transparency, accessibility just means having the access to control things, having the influence to get a response, to, to get participation, to, almost, to be symbiotic with your business partners and have the access to have some of these controls. So one of the things I didn't want to step away from, and I can't possibly represent this enough, okay, is the responses from dealers. Because in the survey that I sent out, I had categories where they could rate, like we just did, the top 10 or 12 things that they would like to see changed within the industry. But I also gave them room to give me comments. Because I think really doing a survey, and I'm not a survey expert, but I realized that numbers without a response generally don't really equate to much. The feeling of what you need to do is oftentimes hidden within their actual words or their response. So some of the responses I thought were really interesting, and I put them in these little boxes here. The best and most time efficient way is to buy online. Okay? It's from a dealer that buys a lot of cars, but it's too much work. And I thought that was a really interesting response. I'm an online buyer. That's a lot of what I do. That's not what I do all the time. But I do do it for large dealer groups and for independents. And in being an online buyer, there is a lot of work there in trying to sort through all the cars. It's not as easy as the physical auction. One of the other responses was, I buy online, but only with sites that have accountability. If they don't have accountability, this particular dealer group will go to the physical lane. Again, really interesting to me. It's something that you may want to consider as we go through some of these categories that I've boxed in for you. Some of the other responses, more reconditioning. And, and this one, I can't really say surprised me. Dealers have a lot of pressure on them these days for inventory turn, for profitability, just like you folks do. But there's an immense amount of turn. But with tools like V-Auto and First Look, there's more and more pressure for cars getting to the front line and getting to market. The win, of course, for you guys could be the cars will have to be replaced sooner. But an interesting comment nonetheless. Lastly on this, if a car has an accident report or car fax, it shouldn't be given an average rating. Again, this kind of lends itself to that whole transparency aspect. But we're going to delve into this here a little bit more. So in transparency, there's a few categories that we're going to talk about. Fees and costs. But it's not just costs. Dealers were really specific that they recognize that the auction system isn't free. In fact, I talked to a lot of dealers that said they're fine with the costs. Their issue tends to lie with transparency, meaning that 
if you're a big dealer group, you could go and negotiate your cost-based system with any one of uh, you folks. Or if you're a marketing company, you know, you have a cost that you offer for doing uh, a brand type uh, remarketing of the vehicles in a blended sale. But what dealers aren't seeing is the transparency like what you would see if you were to go to Amazon or if you were to go to any other online type service, you can see what you're going to pay for it, whether it's based on volume or whether it's not. But there's no special applications that apply to people. And dealers consistently, even the ones that I think probably have a really good deal, really wanted to see a more fair playing field. And I thought that was pretty interesting in their case. Another thing that dealers talked about was the fee costs. I know as cars go up and up and up in value, I heard from a lot of dealers, especially the Highline type dealers or more expensive dealers that do a lot of pre-owned certified, they had a cost about continued rising costs as car values go up. And dealers want to see more of a flattening of that. If they sell a car, they just want to pay a fee. And they're more than happy to pay the fee. Another thing that some dealers mentioned, and it kind of surprised me, but, but I'm seeing it a little bit more, is the dealer-to-dealer -dealer trading portals that are popping up. Interesting concept. Will it take root? I'm not sure. And that's, for those of you that don't know, they're sites that basically allow dealers to buy and sell cars. They don't have a buy fee or a particular transaction fee at all. They're membership-based sites, so the members pay a subscription fee to, be, to have access to those sites and trade on those sites. Will that be the way of the future? I don't know. What I do know, though, is sites like that wouldn't come about unless there was pressure in this category. And, and of course, dealers certainly felt that this is a category that needed to be brought up and talked about. Another one is uniform and improved condition reporting, something you guys are very familiar with, obviously, based off the last uh, slide that we looked at with the, with the uh, chart. Really interesting in, in when I talk to dealers about this. I recognize it from the standpoint of being an online buyer. I mean, you go to one site, you have one type of condition report. You go to another site, you have another condition report all the way through. And in some sites, you can have multiple condition reports within one site, depending upon who took them. You can also have varying degrees of rating systems. You know, what one car says is a den, another car is a PDR, et cetera. You, you guys have heard all of this, I'm sure. But what dealers are really begging for is the more and more that they do business online, and the more that they use and leverage the internet, even for physical in-lane buying. I spoke with a lot of dealers who go to the online version first to search their cars, to look at condition reports, to make their analysis and determination based on what these condition reports read. A lot of large dealer groups, when I spoke to them, said the best thing that could ever happen is if condition reports weren't a matter of competitive set. In other words, Condition reports weren't your market advantage over someone else's market advantage. Condition reports were just that, condition reports. So that everybody could look at and evaluate the cars the same. Is that doable? I don't know. That's up to you guys. What I do know is your customers really think that is a huge deal. Another thing that they talked about is first run upstream inventory. This is kind of interesting in the sense that a lot of companies, remarketing companies, do great job. I, I heard nothing but rave reviews about getting their inventory, their whole inventory, 100%, up and online, holding it there before physical sale. And dealers that belong or are part of those manufacturers appreciate and really enjoy that. Other segments, a portion of the cars may get there, or select cars may be placed on that site. Or in some instances, what I heard from some dealers, is cars will be placed on an upstream remarketing site, but they're really there for the highest bidding point. They're not being placed there in a bidding environment for you to bid on as a customer. And dealers, and you all know your customers, they love to bid. In fact, most dealers I talked to said that if you lowered the price, even reserving the option to make that decision at the end of the bid segment, most dealers are more satisfied being turned down even being the highest bidder, than they are only having a couple choices in what to pay. And as you've well seen in online bidding, or even in lane, nobody bids what they're going to bid right from the start. Everybody bids more so toward the end. So for those groups that are pricing their vehicles uh, and not giving a lot of bidding room, if you will, 
or the flexibility to start the bidding price low and have you have the right to uh, put your reserve or determination at the end, you're really prohibiting the auction process. And a lot of those people that you're prohibiting are actual in-lane buyers because a large number of them that I kind of in my survey had chatted with really spent more time in-lane than they did online, but yet their number one complaint with online is their lack of availability to bid. So for whatever it's worth, that kind of rounds out transparency. Inventory, huge. That's a big, big deal to your customers, big deal to me. However, what you know and I know is more important is accurate information. The condition reports, knowing that the cars are what they're supposed to be, knowing that if there is previous damage on them or if there was previous repair in the shop that that was dealt with properly and dealt with in advance or at least acknowledged to the end buyer. So these are big things. So what you might want to consider is what Starbucks is considering. Starbucks obviously is a, is a brick and mortar operation, they sell coffee. And so, I mean, from their perspective, they should be least concerned about online. But Starbucks actually is more concerned about the future of online and how it affects their business than they are their current in-store operations. I recently read an article, Howard Schultz, the CEO of Starbucks, uh, was speaking in New York at a, at a business conference. And he made a statement that I thought just resonated really well with this particular conference. And that is any company sitting here today that embraces the status quo as, business, as a business proposition is literally facing a collision course with time. Now, when I say that, I don't want you to think, oh, Craig thinks the physical auctions are going. I don't think physical auctions are going away at all. Okay? I don't think Starbucks, I can tell you for a fact, if it's up to me, Starbucks isn't going away at all. But what I will say is I think it's very important that he recognizes and all of us recognize the influence and effect that the internet has in the access to information for your products and for our ability to buy and use sites. So something to consider. Something else I looked at was internet use by group. And I found this really interesting. Of course, you know, I'm really young, I wish. Uh, not as young as I used to be, but I am an early adopter, and so I use the internet quite a bit. But if I look at the next generation back from me, generation Y or X and Y, a little bit different story plays out. They use the internet significantly more than I do, and significance is 23% to 30%, right? So in theory, you could say, well, Craig, if we jump on this internet thing and we start putting all our cars up there and we start making it a live bidding site where we're going to start really low and sell for whatever it sells, we're only going to see a 30% gain, which was interesting about this survey because while they said there's only a 23 to 30% increase in internet usage, internet dependency was totally different. For me, the internet's a tool. For anyone of my generation, it's a nice resource, it's a convenience, it's a tool. For those generations, it's life. It's all they know. So as the buyers come in to replace me, and the inventory managers come in to replace me, and even the general managers, they're going to be dependent. They're going to live on the internet, as opposed to using it as a tool or a resource. So leading me to this question, you need to ask your customers, are you ready for the next generation? I'd say you're well on track. I can tell you as a person who uses the internet a lot, you are definitely on track. But are you there? Because that generation has a lot less patience and time, they squeeze a lot into their time management cycle. Moving on to simplicity. In simplicity, better process and cost for blended sales. This surprised me just a little bit because I didn't think this would resonate quite so highly with dealers, but dealers love putting their cars in blended sales. Um, and and I, frankly, I've done it, I love it myself. Some of the questions that came up here was cost. Um, you know, it, it, can I get it done for less? Cost is a big issue. As we talked about earlier, there's a lot of pressure on the auction and on retail dealers to generate profits, but in that is the margin squeeze. So look at your costs. Look at the process. A lot of dealers were concerned and had talked to me about how much time does it take for me to take a car to the auction? Do I need three days lead time? Is that reasonable? In some cases, some manufacturers or remarketing companies say you need two weeks. Some say you can get it there in a week, but you need to have the title there first. So when I spoke to dealers about this, 
Their response is, can't we just fax in a title? So they know we got the title, we'll get it there a couple days before the sale. They're all fine with having standards. In fact, they're so fine, one of the, I wouldn't even say one of the comments, consistently one particular group, and I'm trying to leave these guys anonymous, their biggest concern, aside from getting their cars simply moved into blended sales, was that the remarketers maintain credibility. By that I mean, they don't want to put just anything. They don't want to see just everything in your blended sales. They want to see the nice cars in your blended sales. And if they don't fit your standards, don't have them. So the dealer groups that I were talking to in independent stores, they were actually saying, yeah, we want blended sales. Yes, we want lower costs. But yes, we want standards. And we don't mind paying for it. We just want to make certain if there's a little bit of room that they can help out. So it was an interesting response when I got to that topic. Another one was improved access for low-cost transportation. This really excited me. This shouldn't excite me, but it really excited me. It excited me from two standpoints. One, it's kind of refreshing to hear something that you've done for a long time, which is buying cars all over the nation and shipping them, and having dealers look at you like you're half nuts, is actually taking root now where dealers are buying cars all over the nation and shipping them. So it's kind of, I mean, I shouldn't be excited about that because now I'm competing with people, but it's kind of encouraging to know that, the belt, that there's movement within that segment. But I heard some ideas that I thought were fascinating. This is what really kind of charged me up, is dealers want improved access for low-cost transportation. A lot of dealers still aren't on some form of transportation site or have access uh, or have thought to really gain access to internet transportation portals. But as I talked to more of these dealers, what came out of this was kind of interesting. Some dealers had brought up to me that they want the option, much like you'd have with Carfax or AutoCheck, to be able to check and push your transportation information direct from that page to your associated transportation site or transportation provider. So in essence, they're looking for time management, which I thought was absolutely brilliant. You make one click, all the data that's relevant to that particular page pushes to another page. You don't have a posting. You just say, yeah, send it and done. Now, to some extent, we have that on some sites, but we don't have the availability to check whatever transportation service that we have. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, one of the other things that came up is simple login process. Now, I know this is probably going to seem like, really, login process is that big a deal? Well, all I can tell you is that from my understanding as a customer, that a login process must include at least one capital letter somewhere between six and eight digits, must have an alphanumeric, can't rhyme with the word bear, has to be changed every 90 days, and can never be used again within the next three cycles that you have a password, or you'll get locked out and you can't call anybody till Monday. So all I would ask you is that dealers want simplicity here, okay? I know that this, I know you gotta protect the sites, I know there's a lot of good reasons, but do we really need to make it that difficult? You know, ultimately, dealers are looking for simplicity, okay? That's all they really want. They're not looking to launch a rocket. They just want to make it simple. And that simplicity really resonates with your customers, not just today, but your future customers that you're going to see. So in this one, I would say ask your customers, as far as process goes, is it helpful and convenient? Really important question. Last is accessibility. So we've covered transparency and we've covered simplicity, but accessibility is, is last on the list. With accessibility, reconditioning on repos and vehicles being taken to sale. Again, this is that push towards faster inventory turn. Dealers, I, you know, I talk to a lot of dealers that love the benefit of having the profitability of, of reconditioning these cars themselves. But if you talk to any buyers, and particularly inventory managers, they love the fact of buying a car, taking it home, selling it, inventory turned back to the auction and replacing the car. That is what our industry has became, and it is very pervasive throughout the industry. It's a great business model. When we deliver, as a group, cars to dealers that are under-reconditioned, granted, it saves remarketers time. I mean, they're getting it to market a little bit faster. It takes out some of the variabilities, in the sense that they're not spending money and hopefully recapturing that money. But I can tell you today, with the tools that dealers use for inventory management, getting that car to the front line is paramount. 
and they will gladly pay substantially more than the cost of reconditioning. It was a consistent theme I heard. A well-reconditioned, well-remarketed car will definitely pull more than the cost of reconditioning, will sell quicker on their lot, and will drive them back to the physical auction, or online auction, depending upon. So that was a really interesting uh, note that I got on, on that particular topic. Next one is more inventory with condition reports. Dealers, and, and I realize the pushback on this one and the challenge, dealers really are looking for vehicles with more condition reports. I know all those dealer cars roll in late. Somehow there's got to be a way to get those cars and those condition reports done to, in online for dealers to review and consider. Another thing that came up here with the condition reports is more interior photos, um, or any interior photos. If you go on Auto Trader, you have lots of photos. But if you go to an auction site, oftentimes it's just the exterior of the car. Photographing the actual damage. Photos seem to be a huge key to this whole process. Another one that was suggested was video walkarounds. And I didn't think that would come up. I'd heard it resonated a little bit. I really didn't think it'd come up in this survey. But it did come up, and I thought that was really interesting. And lastly on this is credibility and accountability for consigned units. And with that, dealers are just looking that when they buy a car, they want to know the car exists if it's online, that an accountability standard to it. They also want to know that if the car isn't there, that there is some accountability against that seller. They don't want to go through the exercise and all the work to not buy a car. They're there to buy a car, and they're there to pay a fee. So they just want help in that aspect of things. So in this category, I'd say, ask your customers, are you there yet? A real simple question, but are you there? Are you completely satisfying them? So with this, what can you do? Well, they're not, the good news is they're not looking for you to change what you've already got. They're not asking you to take a system that works totally well, that they're happy with and completely satisfied with, and reinvent it. They just want it to be simple. So you don't need to take an iPhone and turn it into a taser. That's the great news. So just covering these briefly, uniform and improved condition reporting, lower and consistent pricing structure, more inventory ran upstream first time and then moved to physical. Reconditioning completed on credit and repo units to get them to line faster on the front lines of the dealers. More inventory with more condition reports, specifically the dealer cars that are coming into the auctions. Credibility and accountability in the system so that when dealers buy cars, they know that they're actually going to get them. A better process and cost for controlling the blended sales. Something that's faster and simpler for them and something they can be confident in the pricing structure of. And a simple login pass. It just amazes me. The simple login process and password came up so much. And last, improved access and low-cost transportation options. So that's really what your customers are looking for. From my perspective, regardless of uh, what we want to believe, now more than ever, I think that customers will really define the marketplace for what it is. And when I say that, I don't mean just the dealers. Because if you look at our present retail industry, when you look at used, it's retail pricing based on pricing matrix. When you look at buying, it's reacquiring inventory to get it back to the lot to turn it quicker. So the customer really is defining what the market will be and how fast it will move, which should give you a lot more freedom as remarketers and as auctions. In the end, it's about your customer. And I know you all know that, and you all certainly dialed into that very well in the, in the earlier graph. And I just say stay the course on that and try, if at all possible, try and find ways to change, improve, and make easier and simpler these things that we talked about as it regards transparency, simplicity, and accountability. And with that, I want to thank you very much for having me here, and I hope this was useful and that you get some good takeaways from it. Thank you very much, Craig. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it.